This video is about flip-flop oscillators and how to turn the flip-flop oscillator into a, an oscillator which can actually drive more power than just the standard flip-flop os oscillator. So I've got two circuits here. At the front I've got the st uh, standard two transistor flip-flop oscillator and it's driving the charge pump to increase the voltage uh, and then there's an LED at the end to actually show uh, it being driven uh, with some current. And at the back I've got a, a new um, format of oscillator, it's got two extra transistors in order to drive power. And again it goes for the same charge pump and there's an LED again to show what it's like under load. So I'm showing the voltage on my voltmeter down the bottom. If I switch on the front oscillator here, and the power's uh, on there. And what I'll do is I'll measure the voltage at each stage of the flip-flop, uh, at each stage of the charge pump. So the first stage of the charge pump is uh, this diode here, and it shows 4.18 volts. So the actual supply voltage is about 3 volts. So the first stage increases uh, by about a volt or so. Or so. Uh, and then the next stage goes up again to 6.8. Nine point two, eleven point eight, then thirteen, about thirteen volts. So if I actually put the resistor in, uh, to make the circuit with the LED and light the LED, so this is a standard uh, flip flop oscillator, uh, and when I look at the voltage, then it's dragged it all the way down to two point five volts because. It really can't, the standard oscillator driving the charge pump can't actually provide much power. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this out of the way and bring to the front the alternate one and power it up. And this one's just got two more transistors here. And I'll go for a circuit diagram after I've demonstrated this and explain how it works uh, by just adding a couple of uh, transistors and a couple more resistors as well. Uh, so if I look at uh, the ground there, and so the supply voltage um, pops up here. The supply voltage again is where well, it's two point eight volts. Um, first stage, so it's the two point eight. Next stage, it's up to four, six and a half, nine. 11.5 and just under 13 again so uh, so it, it drives the actual voltage up to about the same amount as you probably expect and if I put the LED in circuit to give it a bit of load so the standard one dropped down to about two and a half volts but this one is still driving up to about almost seven volts on the um, on the charge pump and that's because it can supply a lot more current to the charge pump and I'll go through the actual circuit diagram now. So this is a standard flip-flop up here. And you should recognize that circuit from loads of places. I mean, I use it in lots of places. So you can use it flashing LEDs as a simple thing. Uh, I use it as a frequency generator and um, charge pump uh, generator, clock signal. Things like that, and I've, I'm using in this case PMP transistors. You can use there's an NPN one, which is a more common one to see, and it's just a couple of transistors uh, with resistors, uh, sorry, capacitors on each side, and they as the capacitors charge up, they they uh, activate the base on one transistor, which flips the charge into the other capacitor, which then charges up the base on the other transistor and flips backwards and forwards like that. And uh, the load resistors here on each side, you can place some kind of load on those. And uh, then in, inside there's just the like discharging uh, resistors for the capacitors. Um, and the thing about this circuit is uh, it can supply plenty of voltage because I'm going through a PMP. It can, so it can source lots of current. But then when the transistor switches uh, and it's the, and the Master starts discharging, it goes through this 1k resistor, which means it takes time to discharge. And also, if you're sinking current, it has to come through this 1k resistor, and that um, 
that means you limited. So in the case of 1K, and if it was 5 volts, that'd be 5 milliamps, 5 milliamp hours, that it would be limited to sinking. So it's not ideal for driving the charge pump, although I have used this particular circuit to drive a charge pump for my Raspberry Pi PIC programmer, uh, where I need a, a programming voltage for the PIC microcontroller. And this supplies enough current to for that. I don't think the actual voltage is used to source any current to do anything in the chip. I think it's just uh, to activate certain thing, uh, programming features in the chip. Uh, it certainly doesn't uh, take much current. But from here, it actually supplies a voltage on two stages of this charge pump. And then the alternate the flop uh, supplies the voltage to the other two stages of the charge pump. So at each stage, the voltage increases. Uh, these are the points at which I was measuring in the start of the video uh, as the voltage was increasing, then the, the ultimate voltage out here. And then on the output, I put uh, that LED, uh, which actually uh, dragged the voltage down because the, uh, the load was too, too high. But then uh, for another project I did, I thought, well, actually, I need to drive current. So this is this is my first solution, but it involves adding four transistors and a bunch of resistors. Uh, and so you've got the standard flip-flop over here, although in this case, it's a, an MPN transistor I used on, on this particular one. Uh, but the outputs uh, go to the inputs of uh, pairs of transistors. So there's one pair. There's another pair coming from the, the opposing output. Uh, and those transistors actually drive current high and low, so they can drive directly to the, to the VCC and directly to ground, so you get a good swing of voltage so you can source and sync plenty of current. Uh, but I was looking at this because I needed to use another this circuit and another uh, thing that I was a project I was making. And I was thinking actually adding an additional four transistors over the, over the existing flip-flop two transistors to make six transistors, I thought well, there must be a way of cutting it down. So I came up with this this circuit for the current projects that I'm working on. And I decided that where I had a resistor here, so this is the equivalent of the 1K resistor in, in the circuit back here, I thought, well, that's discharging the capacitors. And so what I could do is I could put a transistor in there because all it has to do is discharge at the point where the capacitor needs to be discharged. So when this transistor's on, this transistor's off, and when this transistor's on, this transistor's off. So they just need to be opposites, and which you get from a, an MPN and a PMP. If you, uh, because it's NP, for so positive switches are on, and positive switches this off, and then negative switches this on, and it switches that one off. So they're, they're on at opposing times, and so actually I found that with this circuit, I actually could drive the charge pump and you could, you can, as well as sourcing current to the charge pump, you can sync current back through the charge pump as well. Um, and so that actually, in the demonstration at the start of the video, you saw the on the output, I put that LED and it only pulled the voltage down about, I think it pulled the voltage down to about six and a half volts, something like that. Uh, which means that you can drive plenty of current. I think, uh, I can't remember how much that LED was actually uh, consuming. It might have been 6 milliamps, 10 milliamps or something like that. But it's um, plenty enough for what I need to do in my new circuits. And so all I've done is change the resistor for a transistor. And then I've had to add a biasing resistor as well. So without this biasing resistor, the flip-flop, wouldn't start its action, uh, but this gets this 100K on each side gets the flip flop going, and and it's uh, so it's a very nice basic circuit to actually create a charge pump, and it's very cheap as well because these transistors are like 5p each or something. Resistors I don't know penny each if you buy enough of them, and the capacitors are probably about 5-10p depending on which ones you've got, and then the um, the the diodes here, I think they're probably about. Five or ten p each as well, so it doesn't doesn't cost much to make this circuit. 